Hmm. Wow. This is not 500 pounds. Ron McGillis here from Metro Zoo. This is the smallest animal I've seen in a long time, at least the smallest warm-blooded animal. Ron, you were saying it's the smallest primate in the Western Hemisphere? Right, sure is. This is a, a pygmy marmoset. It occurs in Colombia. And this guy you see right here in my hand is about full-grown right now. He was captive-born here in Miami uh, through a collection of private breeder who breeds them. And uh, really a very fascinating little beast. His voice is twice as loud as he is. <laughs> uh, it's a high-pitched type thing. Right now he's very, very nervous. This is a new type of experience for him right now. He's getting used to the lights, getting used to new people. Uh, I have him on a little safety harness, so he's not going to jump around. So Thank well. you. I mean, he's, n he's never done television before? No, he's never done television. As a matter of fact, he's never really been a far away from home. Uh, you know, we've worked with him in the past, but uh, this is a totally new thing for us. So he's a little nervous right now. His eyes are penetrating. Yeah, they're very inquisitive and also very alert. Uh, you'll notice his head turns around a lot. He's a little tired right now. He's been kind of worrying himself tough, as, as you call it. I'm sorry. He said, be <laughs> calm, don't come too close, and I go to touch the tough. And he bites Ron about every 20 seconds. I've been trying to keep track. <laughs> Right. What about those teeth, too? Well, fortunately, he's only about eight months old right now, and his teeth are just now coming in. Uh, enough to where I can feel them, but uh, not enough to where I'm going to be crimson all over the place here yet. So what would you like in this animal, too? What's it close to? What does it eat? Well, it's a type, like I say, it's a type of primate close to a monkey. Um, it eats various types of insects. It likes to eat worms, grubs, little uh, seeds from plants. Uh, it's found throughout Colombia and, and related areas right around there. And it's found in troops. They're usually found in groups of about 2 to 15 animals. And uh, they're found around stream beds, uh, right around the shores of streams and low-lying plant heavy vegetation. And they just are in huge colonies that way. I wonder if that would be a good antidote for cockroaches. What do you think? It would be a you good... want to take one home, Peter? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd be willing to do that. They, With uh, that noise, the neighbors Some of the call cockroaches the uh, the <laughs> down here are as big as that <laughs> monkey. Well, they eat a lot because of the fact that they're so hyper, so high strung, they have a very high metabolism, so they eat a lot. They do everything very quickly. Um, like I say, this is one of the smallest of the primates when you compare it to something like a gorilla, which can approach close to 500 pounds. It's a, quite a diverse group of animals. Uh, they or, usually, when they give birth, the babies are not even, uh, they're hardly an inch long, the body length on them. And they usually have twins, and the, the parents will just climb on the back of the, the mother, and she carries them around for the first several weeks of their life. And it really is a bizarre little sight. Are there actually people who have these things as pets? No, actually, you have to have permits to have them as oh. a pet. And they don't, uh, they really are not granting permits to keep them as pets. If you can keep them, the way they grant permits is when you can prove that you're going to be breeding them for their own their own safety. Well, different strokes for different folks, but I don't think that this acts or looks much like a house pet. No, they, anyway. they're really not. <laughs> I could imagine it in a jungle setting. That's what you hear when you when you see the jungles. And a lot of people will hear something like this and automatically assume it is some type of bird. Uh -huh. And uh, really, it's different types of so primates. So you have to go to the low-lying areas of Colombia to find that, or it's well, not in mountainous areas no, at all? No, it's not really, well, it can be in mountainous areas, but uh, there are long stream beds uh, right along the coast of streams where there's a lot of high vegetation, a lot of insects, a lot of grubs and things like that which they feed on. And like I say, they're voracious feeders. How big will this animal get? Right now he's about 18 months, you said. Oh, he's about 8 months, and he's eight almost months. full size. It's about full size. How <laughs> strong is it? He's really not terribly, terribly strong as far as primates go. Uh, but he, he's, he's very quick and extremely agile. Yeah, right now, really an acrobat. Look at this. Yeah, if he didn't if he didn't have his little harness on, he would be up in the rafters going I through all the say, lights where and everything. Would, where would he? Yeah, be? and we'd never be able to catch him because they're extremely quick. But well, we need to have a couple more in here, and we could just have our own. Have a little family. I, yeah. I couldn't believe as we were sitting here, he stayed quiet while while you were talking. With Almost him. on cue. Yeah. <laughs> in the place that he lives now, how many there's in a, his family? There's a group of about five in his particular uh, enclosure, where he's really doing very well. As a matter of fact, his mother is once again pregnant. Uh, so she, he's recently kind of been weaned, and he's, as a matter of fact, he's been weaned for quite a while. And uh, his mother's pregnant again, and we're expecting some twins pretty soon. I'm glad he's not a little bit bigger, because you would probably be bleeding by now, right? Yeah, I probably would be. <laughs> I said to Ron, I'm surprised with all the animals you bring in, you don't have more stitches. You're not more <laughs> cut up. And then he informed me that he has more than 100 stitches. <laughs> It's not as bad as people make it out to be. It's just, it, it's always, when it happens, it's always my fault. It's never really the animal's fault. Yeah, well, it's, it's our fault today because, well, because no, it, we had to bring it this, in. His primary purpose is going to be for education, so he's going to get used to this. Like I say, it's his first time out, so right now he's just, he's getting used to it, and a lot of this has to do with anger, too. He's, you know, 
He's being a little He's restrained. He's trying to figure out what what's <laughs> going on. <laughs> Who are these people? I guess if he just looks at you. I have to tell you, some animals are, are quiet and gentle looking. This animal is a little bit scary looking. He's a little hyper little looking. Tiny, estimate. A little tiny, but. And if you look oh. at his foot close up, okay. if you look at his face close up, he settles down here for a second. He's just like a, he's the, to me the prototype of the werewolf. All right, well, we're out of time. So coming up, answers to most asked questions about banana.